Tonight, changes to the budget. The province will not be releasing full revenue forecasts or having guests at the legislature. Also, how educators are helping kids learn at home. And staying active, how some fitness providers are moving to virtual exercise. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It's a subdued St. Patrick's Day. It is Tuesday, March 17th, and CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Good evening. It's been another day of COVID-19 news that changes hour by hour. In Ontario, Doug Ford has declared a state of emergency after that province marked its first death due to COVID-19. To our west, Alberta also declared a state of emergency today after a jump in cases. Here at home, Saskatchewan's chief medical health officer announced we now have eight cases of COVID-19. Two cases are confirmed. They're both in Saskatoon. The rest, five in Regina, one in northern Saskatchewan, are presumptive. So far, all cases are related to travel. Dr. Shahab says the method of self-isolation is an added layer of protection for people. Some may show mild symptoms but are a risk without isolation. So the data I've seen is that, and that's why the two-week home isolation is so important. You're home isolating while you're asymptomatic because there is data that says that even when you have mild symptoms, a slight cough, a slight achiness, you can transmit. Uh, apart from the one person who's hospitalized, all the rest of the cases are actually doing well, and we expect them uh, to make a full recovery within a week or two. Um, there's good evidence now that people who have mild infection clear the virus within 10 to 14 days. So far, the province has tested more than 1,100 people for COVID-19. There are an additional 46 cases awaiting results. The tests are being conducted at undisclosed locations and by referral only. Here are the latest number of confirmed and presumptive COVID-19 cases in Canada. There are 598 cases in all. There are 186 cases in British Columbia, including seven deaths. Alberta has seen the biggest jump today with 23 new cases, taking their total to 97. There are eight here in Saskatchewan. Manitoba has 15 cases. Ontario just announced 11 new cases. They're now up to 190, the most in the country. There are 74 cases in Quebec. There are eight cases in New Brunswick. There is still just one case in Prince Edward Island. There are seven cases in Nova Scotia, and there is now three cases in Newfoundland and Labrador. The provincial government has decided to postpone the release of the full 2020-2021 budget. The opposition had asked for the budget to be delayed because of the pandemic and the current position of international markets, including plunging oil prices. A portion of the planned budget will still be released tomorrow, but not the full document. Adam Hunter explains. Finance Minister Donna Harpower will release a scaled back budget on Wednesday afternoon. That means the government will release its spending plans over the next 12 months, but not its revenue forecast. Now, just yesterday morning, Premier Scott Moe said the government would go ahead with its budget and proceed to the debate stage. But that position flipped in just 24 hours. Uh, what we are faced with uh, this spring with the uh, coronavirus or the COVID-19 uh, outbreak in, in, in Canada, around the world, and, and how that's affecting us in, in the province of Saskatchewan, I, I think it's fair for us to uh, get our spending plans out so that we can provide that certainty to our partners across uh, the province. We will operate on special warrants for, for a period of time. Opposition leader Ryan Miley had asked for the government to postpone its budget. He's now asking for financial aid packages to middle and low income families and to workers and employers, including paid sick leave if they are affected by the COVID pandemic. Making sure that we're actually putting enough dollars into the healthcare response to COVID-19. We see a few more dollars talked about in health estimate uh, in this budget. Once again, not really relevant to reality, but certainly nowhere near uh, what would be needed to respond to these increased needs. Premier Mo indicated the government could move to fund operations through a special warrants, which would indicate a suspension of the legislature, although that was not confirmed today. Adam Hunter, CBC News, Regina. 
So if you're sick, how do you know if you have COVID-19 and how do you know if you're contagious? We spoke to a Saskatoon microbiologist, Dr. Joseph Blondeau, for some clarification. We don't know exactly all of the details around the contagious periods with this virus. We know that, that for a lot of viruses, you tend to be excreting virus up to the point when you become symptomatic and during that time. But uh, one of the hallmarks of COVID-19 is fever and cough. And so clearly, if you have cough and you're coughing, then you have, you're liberating the virus out. And that uh, is a greater risk for then spreading it not only on surfaces, but also to other individuals. Respiratory viruses are spread by uh, either aerosolization or droplet. This particular virus is a droplet spread virus. And as a consequence, uh, close contact is a means for spreading, as is uh, contaminating your hands and then your hands touching your face, your mouth, your eyes, uh, your ears, etc. In order to prevent respiratory viruses from spreading, then you have to do these things like um, social distancing to keep uh, uh, not so close to the next person, make sure that you're washing your hands, uh, and uh, make sure that if you're symptomatic, then you're staying away from other people. One of the things that I think most people don't think about is how many different individuals they interact with on a daily basis, how many times they may be touching surfaces or uh, that, uh, that others have touched. Uh, and as a consequence, when you get together as a group, you actually don't don't know with everybody else in that group how many variables that they may have come in contact with which could increase your risk. When you're going to go and do one of these everyday things, you need to think about where you're going, what's the likelihood you're going to be put into a situation where you may come in contact with somebody who could potentially be spreading the virus or, or contaminated surfaces. Uh, and if you're unsure, then maybe you should be checking with wherever it is that you need to go to ask them what type of measures they have in place in order to reduce the likelihood that the virus may be present in their environment, whether they're cleaning surfaces or maybe even recommending that you don't come to that particular business. It's always easy to criticize um, uh, governments um, when you're not sitting in the chair. And, and I think out of fairness, uh, 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 Premier Mo and, and Prime Minister Trudeau are making recommendations based on the data that's being given to them by public health and studying what's going on against the world. And I think that uh, we all need to realize that these are difficult times and we need to be supportive of our government's efforts in order to deal with this situation. Parents continue to have questions about education as schools wind down in Saskatchewan. How will grading work? How will kids access homework? And what about community school lunch programs? Emily Pasiak tried to find out. I spent all day trying to get to the bottom of some of the big questions. We know schools are closed and it's very possible classes won't return until September. Let's talk about grades. Education Minister Gord Wyant says students will be passed on to the next grade with the mark they currently have. There will be an opportunity for students to work from home to boost their grades, but we don't know what that looks like yet. Grade 12 students with passing grades now will be able to transition to post-secondary schools. We also know the government has formed a task force to help deal with things like final exams and how online and distance learning will work. Right now, things are still up in the air when it comes to online learning. Teachers have the option of working from home or at school. We also don't know whether these online classes would be mandatory when they are up and running. Another concern is for kids' nutrition. In some cases, children rely on schools for hot meals. The Albert Community Schools principal told us she's already working with the school's nutritionist to make as much food as possible to send home with the children leading up to Friday. The goal is to create 130 food hampers. The staff also put together 260 care packages, one for each student. They're full of pencil crayons, sketchbooks, educational games, snacks, and more. As for the internet, the government is in talks with SASTEL to boost bandwidth in the province to make sure everyone is connected. If that's not possible, another alternative will be found. Emily Pasiak, CBC News, Regina. Some educators are getting creative and trying to help parents keep kids learning while they're at home. Chris Scribe is one of those people. He's taking the classroom to Facebook Live and people are buying in. So uh, we're, we're live. This is the online classroom, Think Indigenous grade four. Made a post and, on Facebook, uh, we're gonna be getting you know, just to... thinking, you know, like a, I have a lot of people that are on my, uh, uh, that are on my page, I guess. And I just kind of put it out there and man, it blew up. So this, uh, so this blew up to 
Uh, yesterday, I think we reached, I mean, up until today, we reached 3,500 people, 35,000 people. And uh, yeah, that reach is crazy. There's been like a massive amount of shares on the original post that I did yesterday. And there's been so much uh, uptake from community and people are just uh, super pumped about participating. And it's not only in Saskatchewan, it's kind of like all over. Like we were, we had people tuning in from Oklahoma, uh, you know, British Columbia, Manitoba, Alberta. So, I mean, it's just everywhere. Uh, I think this it's a really about, high stress situation so for parents, at, but kids also great, feel that. And just this sense really of um, offering this normalcy kind of uh, routine kind of piece about? for so they're still going to be in school, they're still going to be learning, and what that looks uh, like just adds to uh, another level of, uh, uh, of you know, calmness and just kind of thinking uh, thinking in a good way. We're, we're continuing on. Anybody that wants to volunteer, it's free. Uh, you know, we do focus on Indigenous knowledge and wanting to promote that in, in, in this work. But what I want people to know is that that, Indigenous knowledge and being included in this type of format is open to everybody. It's not specifically for Indigenous people. It's open to everybody because we can all learn uh, all of those things that are important to Indigenous people, but also meet the uh, outcomes and indicators within the curriculum. This is an opportunity. Everybody's home right now. You know, like there's a lot of people that are home from work or uh, people that are just like, okay, so what do we do? They are part they're engaged in the, in the learning. They're getting to see. Uh, we can't enforce kind of like any homework or anything, but the lesson that I taught this morning on storytelling, you know, I asked, I asked the kids actually to go and find their favorite story and to retell that. Uh, it's the parents that are going to be monitoring that. It's the parents that are going to listen to their kids. Um, we don't, as parents, always get an opportunity to be in that role and listening and being a part of our kids' learning as much as we would like. I mean, we all got jobs and stuff. So this is, uh, this really helps that piece as well. I mean, connecting uh, education to parents and to homes and uh, really to community. It just, uh, so many positive things can come out of this. FSIN Chief Bobby Cameron says the time for talk is over. He says it's time for governments to support First Nations communities as they battle this pandemic. Cameron is asking for an immediate funding boost of $20 million for Saskatchewan First Nations. He says it would allow them to do more tests, hire more health workers, and ensure everyone has access to healthy food if isolated. Cameron says initial talks with other government officials have been positive, but it's not enough. There's some instances where we feel good, where there's good comments, but now we need the actual action to happen at the First Nation level. We need action. Last week, the feds pledged $1 billion nationally to fight the pandemic, but Cameron says it's unclear how it will benefit First Nations. He says none of that money has reached any of his member communities. The federal government will soon be announcing changes to employment insurance and taxes, but for now, the list of small business owners facing economic uncertainty continues to grow. Kendall Latimer has the latest. This list of closures continues to grow. Yoga studios, gyms, small grocery stores, restaurants, salons, pubs and theatres. The decision to close down has been tough. Nobody wants to close their doors. I mean, we're entrepreneurs. We love doing this. And also, this is our livelihood. This is not an easy decision. And, and I don't think it's been an easy decision for any of the small businesses that have decided to do this. The store is turning its focus to online shopping and delivery. Ozog believes it will be sustainable if people can support it from afar. Hundreds of small business owners across Canada have already reported a decrease in sales. Some have closed and others may not ever open again. To be fully honest, we'd, we'd been, we've been seeing the end of, of, of this business, the capital at least, um, for a little bit. And, and so the plan was to, to close and rebrand. Um, unfortunately, this kind of came out of nowhere and, and sideswiped us and, and forced our hand and, and forced us to... Uh, I, I woke up Monday morning and when I woke up, I didn't expect what I would be doing is closing one of my restaurants and that's what happens. Rogers says it has been rough, but he's optimistic and hopes to open a new restaurant in Regina soon. Meanwhile, in Saskatoon, the iconic Broadway theatre is closing its doors too, and the artistic director says they had no choice. No matter if we made it free, people aren't leaving their houses right now. And so just, it, it's just a, 
it's a real difficulty to try and be a business or an organization like the Broadway is, which functions exclusively on public gathering. That's our job all year long. It's not just the core of our business, it is the business. He says it could take weeks to get the theater back up and running, even after they get the green light to go ahead. Kendall Latimer, CBC News, Regina. No surprise, St. Patrick's Day celebrations are not going ahead as usual this year. Locally, pubs in Regina, including O'Hanlon's and Leopold's, are closed. But on the upside, this Regina resident appears to be in the St. Patrick's Day spirit. And that display is free for everyone to enjoy. We'll be back after the break with Fiona and her full forecast. Stay with us. This weather update is brought to you by Capital GMC Buick Cadillac. Markdown March is on now. And CBC weather specialist Fiona Odlum joins me now. I know a lot of things are canceled, but you know yes. what's not canceled? Outside. Yeah, and a snowstorm. Oh. <laughs> she asked me earlier, is it going to be nice out? I'm like, yes. Oh, I wish you wouldn't have lied. <laughs> It's coming. Keep lying to yeah, me. Keep I, lying yeah. to me. <laughs> it's going to be all right. Let's look outside and see how things are shaping up. Ah, oh, it's gorgeous tonight. Mm -hmm. You know what? You can go outside and have a nice walk, get some fresh air in your lungs, and uh, walk out your worries. We're going to have an all right night tonight, my friends. Got a little bit of snow on the horizon. We'll talk about that in a minute. I got to show you two really great viewer photos. Let's start with this first one. This one is so fantastic. It was uh, sent to us uh, by Jamie. I always love a good abandoned house, or maybe someone lives there. That looks like a pretty well-kept door, but I love a great sunset. Thank you so much, Jamie, for this one. And let's have a hoot on this wonderful Tuesday. Dan took this picture just a little bit south of Assiniboia. Ooh, I love those ears. <laughs> They're looking right at you, those eyes. All right, current conditions. We've got minus 15 in Laurent, minus 9 in PA, and 1 degree in Estevan. Now, that is definitely a little bit unusual. We're still feeling some of that Arctic air. It's really holding on nice and tight. We've got uh, minus 10 right now in Saskatoon. Usually, we're looking for temperatures around uh, 1 degree at this time of year, and, well, we're definitely still a little bit cooler. With the wind chill, it's still a bit breezy. Minus 18 in Saskatoon. Minus 7 in Regina. Regina is a little bit warmer. We're feeling a little bit good right now. Uh, Maple Creek. We're going to talk about that southwest corner there a lot in this cast just because we're expecting some snow to be coming our way starting tonight. So we're going to watch for the wind. 42. It's going to be about 20 gusting 40, possibly even more. So with some fresh snow, visibility is going to be a concern. If you don't already follow the Sask Highways hotline, you should. They've been saying that we could get about 2 to 5 centimeters through that southwest corner and that's going to be impacting visibility and road conditions. Well, this is the upper atmosphere that we've been looking at. All this blue, the darker blue, is all the cool Arctic air. And that is going to stay with us right until about the weekend. Then things really start to return back to seasonal. We like that word, it's seasonal. All right, this is the snow tr that we're going to be tracking. So here's that system. First of all, starting tomorrow afternoon, it's going to be arriving. It's going to be it's going to be significant, and it's going to be pretty much isolated. The heaviest amount in that southwest corner. We're going to see a little bit of snow through Regina, about a centimeter, maybe less than a centimeter in Saskatoon. It's going to be a factor over in Yorkton and Weyburn and Estevan as it tracks east. Well, today we got to about zero degrees in Regina, minus 11 overnight. Ooh, it was minus 33 in 190. Two, my goodness. Well, the next seven days looks like this. We're going to see some evening snow tomorrow, less than a centimeter tomorrow night. Look how beautiful it warms up on the weekend. Two, three, five. We like those numbers. That's above seasonal. That's fantastic. All right, Saskatoon, I don't have the same beautiful story for you. <laughs> Sorry, buds. Uh, minus five today was what you got to. Minus 20 overnight with the wind chill. It's going to feel a little bit cooler than that. The next seven days look like this. Your overnight lows are still pretty cool for my mm. liking. We don't warm up really until the beginning of next week, Sam. Cold, but we'll get outside tonight. You know what? Cold but sunny. Yes. I like sunny. I'll take that as well. Yeah. Thanks, Fiona. <laughs> yeah. Stay with us. We've got more news after the break. Welcome back. If you're feeling a little stir crazy at home, you're not alone. Many major chain and boutique gyms and fitness centers, they've all closed their do doors because of COVID-19, but some are finding ways to keep people moving. I caught up with one of them in Regina earlier today. 
We decided yesterday that we would be closing our gym space. Um, we were waiting to see if there was going to be any guidance or support from the government level um, on what we should be doing. Uh, and unfortunately, we just didn't hear any type of uh, feedback when it came to small businesses and small boutique cell gyms like ours. So we did decide to close our space yesterday. So our first one is going to be a squat jump burpee. We decided that we would be offering uh, online workouts so that people can do workouts from home and we would make sure that they would be um, equipmentless so that it would make it um, as easy as possible for people to be able to get their sweat on. Uh, today we've added a few other things. So we will be posting, um, multiple different workouts. So one being, uh, the at home workout without equipment. We will also do a workout for people that do have the barbell or sorry, um, yeah, barbells or dumbbells or benches at home as well. Um, and then lastly, we actually decided today that we would loan out, um, any of the equipment in our gym that, I mean, obviously is tread portable. So when you are exercising and when you're, whether you're sweating or it's exercise or it's physical activity, um, you're releasing different hormones throughout your, um, during, or in your body that help you to stay, um, happier, healthier, all that kind of stuff. The other thing is that, um, when you are exercising, you have a tendency to choose healthier options of food. So in a time like this, I know my first and foremost, I'm going to jump to go, I'm going to have a glass of wine and a bag of chips. And, but when you're exercising, those hormones will help to deter you from choosing those unhealthy foods. Fiona's back with one last look at tonight's weather and you're not going to lie to me about this one. No, I wouldn't do it twice. <laughs> All right, tonight in Regina, we're going to watch the temperature dip down to about minus 8 with a really light wind under a partly cloudy sky. It's going to be it's going to be an okay evening here. Tomorrow, we'll, we'll see a little bit of snow pushing in. Uh, tomorrow morning, minus 12 and a light wind under a partly cloudy sky. You see a trend there. We're going to see that as well up in Saskatoon and minus 18. But, Sam, minus 26 with that wind chill. That's the issue. Ooh. Yeah, and then tomorrow morning, that wind chill will still stick around minus 19 at 9, minus 24 with the wind chill. But still, look at the first word there, sun. A little bit of sun. Let's take the positive. Silver lining every day. Mm. Got to find one. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, before we leave you tonight, something to bring a smile to your face. Last night, Burton Cummings took to social media to give his fans a private concert. I know you got television and you got books to read and all that stuff, but I thought I'd sing one more for you. Because, uh, you know what? I'm not going anywhere either. <laughs> what will you see? Cummings and Randy Bachman have a reunion tour scheduled this spring and summer. No word yet if their dates in Regina and Saskatoon in June will have to be rescheduled. For now, we have this performance on social media. I love that. You know, Jan Arden did one last night as well mm -hmm. because, like, she was supposed to be performing. And I love this, you know. And I've also seen people uh, just, like, reading stories. Like, Josh Gad has been reading stories to kids. I think it's, it's a cool way to try to stay interactive. Anything with books makes me happy, especially with yeah. all, of the, all of the things that are coming out. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that is it for us tonight. We have a lot of updates anytime on our website at cbc.ca slash sask. Yeah, you can always follow us on social on our social media channels, and we'll be I'll be back tonight at eleven. All right. Well, have a great night, and uh, we'll see you when we're back. Yep. Yeah. Take care.